Welcome back to the Ruby Tuesday. My name's Ruben. This is my review for Amazon Prime's or Prime Videos Fallout TV series based on the much loved franchise of the Fallout games. Let's talk about it. In a future post apocalyptic Los Angeles brought about by nuclear decimation, citizens must live in underground bunkers to protect themselves from radiation, mutants and bandits. So in this review, I'm going to do game versus TV series. I'm going to do acting. I'm going to do special effects. I'm going to do story, sound and soundtrack, cinematography, and then I'm going to wrap up. So coming from a gamer, my specific type of gaming is that I love story games, even if some of those are open world some of the best open world games uh, in my experience are story driven like Skyrim. Wait, I know you. You're a wanted man. And it's time to pick me. You get to be your own adventurer. You get to create your own character. And the Fallout games are synonymous with that. I was excited about this series, but I was also really nervous because we've had so many adaptations from games that are not great. <laughs> Super Mario Brothers, Luigi! original movie, Double Dragon, and kind of know what they are, even though they're not great movies, they're just fun. But The Last of Us is kind of the pinnacle for me. It's like, okay, we're, we're really in that world now. So when it comes to the game versus the TV series, thankfully they're doing their own vault. It's Vault 33, I believe. We've seen other vaults and you normally start as a player sometimes before the nuclear explosion then it happens we're not really given a reason as to why it was brought about we just know bad things happened and then you start as you know the overhaul wearing protagonist and everything from the bunkers to the world outside is a fully realized world of a, like a love letter to the fans if you're a fan of the games will love just the easter eggs itself and then for my wife who's never played the games she was loving the world design and the look of it so there's equally equal measure for those that have never played the game 100 percent there's going to be a massive game resurgence when it comes to the fallout franchise now after this i just found that the tv series was reminding me of how much i love the games uh, which is a it's a nice equilibrium there an honorable recreation of a story but then also gone their own way with it when it comes to the acting there are three main protagonist stories here three main protagonists that kind of intertwine that intersect but walter goggins i think for me is the the standout here he's playing the ghoul he plays cooper howard he's the shining protagonist for me because he brings about a menace that we needed there is a big bat that's out in the ether that we're introduced to sort of but him as the ghoul has such great presence and you kind of are on his side because you kind of know what he had they set up his character in such a beautiful way that when we see him we know what he's become we don't necessarily agree with what he's doing but the bad assery that he protrudes is i guess made in a way that you believe that that character would have ended up like that because of circumstances coming together the fruition of that so the goal that walter goggins plays is wonderful to look at but more to listen and see how that character is going to react because you keep thinking there's some sort of humanity a good side to him and he is just relentless in his character he's a, a very broken character that brings such a menace was much needed for our other two protagonists which are going on anti-hero journeys so we have Aaron Motten, who plays Maximus, who is part of the Steel Brotherhood. Maximus, I think this character has an anti-hero storyline because he's conflicted, broken. None of these characters are just two-dimensional. There's a nice nuance. Aaron Motten really shines in his character of portraying this, the level of progression. We've seen the character development and him wanting to be the hero. He wants to be that, but this world doesn't really have time for heroes. And so we see him trying to play the good guy in a world where everything is just out to kill you. And mostly everybody will swindle you out of everything from your organs to the very teeth in your mouth. That is the world he's trying to fight against and be a hero in. And that is really interesting to see. Then we have Ella Pernell, who plays Lucy McLean, has a rescue mission to rescue her father. And she is totally the fish out of water because she's been in the bunker. She's wearing the blue suit. She has a pip boy. 
And then when we see her introduced with all her ideologies that no longer exist in this world, when she comes up against who she is as a person and the world constantly tries to break her down, when she comes face to face with Walter Goggins' character Cooper Howard, she's come face to face with somebody that is for all intents and purposes not good and won't ever be good, even when she shows kindness to a character like that she shows kindness everywhere she goes and everywhere she goes she's kind of being used so the world is kind of breaking her down but her character her her goodness kind of seeps out around her and so that fish out of water again is really interesting to see how ella pronoun plays that and you can't help but be on her side when it comes to the story i was worried that because it's such an open world game you go and find your story missions there are times where you can just be out in the wastelands not doing any story so converting that into a tv series that makes sense i thought i wondered how they were going to do that but what they do is they kind of take the main threads of what's happened in the world a very realized world they implement that but then we follow the storylines of our three main protagonists and the intertwining lines i think is really great but at the heart of it is a rescue mission and a thing a macguffin that everybody is after and that makes our characters intertwine and interact with the world around them it makes for a very riveting storyline because we have a deadline because of impending doom for a life a rescue mission and also whoever controls the macguffin basically controls the wasteland so that storyline element is very well realized now because some of the episodes are quite meaty you get a lot of interaction and world building from characters in the first few episodes but it never strays away from the main arc even when we're going to flashbacks it's always building character progression especially when we're having flashbacks with uh, let's say walter goggins sometimes we'll go back to the vault and so all of this is all leading to those two, two main storylines which i thought were very well done when it comes to the cinematography it's very much built for large world bigger the better in conjunction with your soundtrack and your score i'm going to put those two two bits together because it's easy to talk about the look the feel of it and what you hear and see the combination of that is very much exporting you to the fallout world the fallout land and it's a beautiful experience even at its height that the heights of the the action that you get that is sometimes very gory um, a lot of the time very gory and so those cinematography shots with the score elevating the mood is so beautiful that everything feels like it needs to be at the cinema even though you, you most people are probably watching it uh, hopefully on uh, the biggest tvs they have rather than you know, small mobile phones immersive the cinematography is beautifully colorized wonderfully shot and that score and soundtrack is just so immersive that I can't help but want to binge the episode. I also want to talk about the set in this because the set designs here are so very much taken out from the game and plunked in in reality. It's like they copy and paste it except they had to build them and they look so good. So as a fan, every time I saw a new city, I was like, I feel like I've been there. I've played in this world. Everything from the desert shanty towns to being inside uh, the the robots everything just felt authentic the action in this is really great even though it's seriously gory the the weaponry use the guns that you see on display how the the intensity is hyped up by what's going on on screen at insurmountable odds for some of our main good guy protagonists when things are going good for them, like true storytellers, the action will then show you how dark and dangerous this world can be. Around every corner, every desert hole, every building, there's something out or multiple somethings that want to kill you. And the action portrays that in a beautiful way. This was quite an experience and I loved every moment of it. I don't think I could add anything or take anything away. I didn't think any acting was weak. I didn't think any of the prosthetics were bad. I thought they were all excellent. Special effects, VFX, all looked top notch. Even the creature creations, they looked otherworldly in their mutantness. But I never remember thinking, oh, that's totally VFX. I just thought, holy crap, that thing's gonna eat them or dismember them. All in all, I think this is five Nicholas Cages out of five. <laughs> and you got one. The performances are great, the editing story, everything worked. That doesn't mean that people won't find issue with it, but for me, it's perfect. I that's what I wanted. I felt the love of the genre, of the games. I love the performances and the character development and the arc, the fish out of water. 
the score, the sound design, the sets, everything really felt like it worked for me. And so I hope you guys give it a chance, especially if you haven't played the games. I think this world will be really immersive for you. You do have to allow the story to build to kind of make sense as you're introduced to all these characters and the story intertwines. You've got to give it a few episodes to get going in that aspect. But while you get there, the world itself is so immersive and so beautiful to look at that I don't think you'll mind. So let me know your thoughts and feelings down below. What is your favorite Fallout game? For me, even though I love 4 and I love the others, New Vegas, even though I know that wasn't made by Bethesda, I think, uh, is my favorite because the world is so big and the amount of DLCs that were just excellent. Now I need to go find my bottle caps and I'll see you for the next review. I'm going to be dropping a bunch today because I had a really busy week, uh, so I wasn't able to record the stuff I'd seen. So <laughs> if you see like a stupid amount of reviews from me today, that's because uh, I kind of batch recording and getting them all out in the same day. So thanks for being a part of the Ruby Tuesday. I hope you found this informative and you get the heart and passion of what it is I'm trying to portray to you guys about this series. I really enjoyed it. I didn't get screeners for this, so I had to wait for the day of release. So it's, it's, it's a day late, but I hope that's okay. Thanks so much for watching, but most of all, until next time, remember, live long on Tuesday.